Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video I'm going to go over timers, async versus sync. I'm going to be using LEDs in upcoming videos and there are two different ways to make the LED flash and I want to go over both ways so that way when I use it in the videos I don't have to describe this portion of it I can just refer back to this video. If we were talking one-on-one -on -one, that would be considered a synchronous conversation because we really wouldn't be doing anything else we'd just be chatting back and forth. If we were emailing that would be considering an asynchronous conversation because we could be doing other things and then get to the email when we want. We could have an alarm set up to let us know when we have an email or we could just check it at our convenience. Synchronous is more of a way to get things done if you don't have anything else to do. If you have multiple things to do you want to use asynchronous type of communication. The same thing is with programming. If you're checking multiple sensors you'll want to do more of an asynchronous type of communication. If you're just checking one thing, like if we were just making a light turn off for a second and then turn back on for a second, then we could use synchronous. I'm going to show you both in this video. My first example is going to use synchronous. For this program, we're going to use a counter. And then we're going to set up our serial port. We're going to put the LED on pin 13 and set it up as an output. And then down in the loop, we're going to print at the beginning, start, and then we're going to give it a pass, which will be the counter. When you're serial printing, you have to remember that you have to turn that integer into a string, or it's called casting. Then we're going to delay one second. Then we're going to digital write. We're going to change the LED to turn it on. We're going to delay another second. And we're going to turn it off. And then we're going to print when it's all over. We're going to increment the counter and we're going to start all over. I have a camera set up on my LED so you can see it flash in real time. I'll set it up here or maybe down here. I'm going to upload this code and you should see this LED start to flash. And it should be on and off for a second. I'm going to start the serial monitor now. You can see it's past zero and, and it should be cycling through. I'm going to turn off the auto scroll. So what happens is, is it prints this pass one, and then there should be a pause before the end. Let's clear it one more time. So we got the start, it waits two seconds, and then the end. And then the start happens immediately. And, the, and this works fine if you're not doing anything else because when it's in the delay mode, you can't do anything. The whole processor is stopped and then we send it, we change its value to a high and then we stop it again and then we change it to a low. And that's why there's a delay between the start and the end. but between the end and the start, which is down here, it's almost instantaneous. So if we were trying to do more logic in here, we could have problems with the delay. So there's a function out called millisecond. And down here, we're just going to print it. So we're going to do a serial print line, just like above. Only what we're going to show is we're going to show milliseconds. And once again, we have to turn this into a string. And we run a function called M-I-L-L-I-S. It's short for milliseconds. And it returns the number of milliseconds since the program was started. Now we're going to upload it. And we should see the millisecond show up here. And I've got the auto scrolling off, so we're just going to see the first page. Since we delay a second before it turns on and a second before it turns off, each pass should be about 2,000 milliseconds, which is what we're seeing here. And we can use this to turn this synchronous program into an asynchronous program. And we can do that by adding a variable 
and the milliseconds are in a form of an unsigned integer. And an integer can be positive and negative numbers, but an unsigned is just positive. But instead of an integer, they use the term long. And we're going to just call it current mil. We're going to set it equal to zero just to start. And we're going to remove this portion because we don't want the delays anymore. And instead we're going to do a comparison. We're going to see if the current millisecond count is greater than our current value, which right now is zero. But we also want to have, this is where we add our delay. So it's zero. So when we first start it up, the millisecond is going to be zero. So we want to wait a second before we do anything. So we're going to add 1,000 to this value. And it's a good idea to put this in uh, parentheses before, we, before the comparison. So we're comparing the current value, which is 0, plus 1,000. So it's not going to do anything until the milliseconds get above 1,000. And then we set the value of current mil equal to the millisecond, to whatever that reading is. So that way the next time through it has to be a thousand more. And now we're just going to change the output of pin 13. We want to make it the opposite of what it is every second. If it's on we want it to go to off. If it's off, we want it to go to on. So we're just going to use this exclamation point, which is not, which means the opposite. And then we're going to read the value of 13. So when we read the value of 13, if it comes back as high, we're going to set it to not high. It'll be low, so we'll set it to low. If we read it to low, it'll be not low, and it'll turn it to high. Now this time when we run it, since we don't have this delay, this loop is going to happen very fast. So I'm going to turn the auto scroll on so it scrolls down and you'll see what I mean. Instead of this slow change here, it's going to go really fast. But this light should still flash at the one second interval. You can see how fast this is going. I'm going to turn the auto scroll off so we can see the difference in the milliseconds. Because I'm still recording the milliseconds. So 6892 to 6940, that's about 50 milliseconds now. Whereas the last time in order to get through the loop, it took over two seconds because it was delaying. So now not the light doesn't change every time through the loop, but yet we can do other things quickly. The other thing I found interesting is that this 50 milliseconds, this change in here, if I change and I don't print out the start and the end, we'll upload it again. And we won't see this start and the end, but we'll still see the milliseconds. We'll see if that alters this and makes it a little different from approximately 50 milliseconds. And you can see that it's about 20 milliseconds. It takes a little bit to settle in. So the fact that you're writing a serial print line out causes more of a delay in the time that it loops through here, which makes sense. If you want to shorten it down, you just reduce what it does. Let's go ahead and change this to 500. And that should speed up the light but it still should maintain about 20 seconds in between or 20 milliseconds in between and you can see the lights flashing faster and yet we're still about 20 milliseconds in between each reading if we slow this down Now 
Now it should be about a, a two second change. And you can see that the flashing is, is way slower now. And if you look, it's still about 20 seconds in between readings, or 20 milliseconds in between readings. So in this video, I showed you two ways to make a light flash. One that uses synchronous, which takes forever to go through the loop the entire time that you want the light to be flashing. And another way that just that speeds through the loop much faster and only flashes the light at certain intervals. We're going to mainly use this asynchronous method going forward. And then when I use this method, I'll just refer back to this video to those who haven't seen it. And that should speed up videos going forward. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.